Are you hesitant about taking on a design or decorating project because you're worried about making an expensive mistake? You're not alone. Seemingly trivial design decisions can turn into expensive issues fast, but most of these issues can be avoided pretty easily. That is why in this video, I'll be going through the 10 most costly design and decorating mistakes so you can avoid them from the get-go. Paint always looks different on a wall to what it looks on a sample card. Lighting conditions dramatically alter how we perceive color, so the little swatch that you thought looked good in your local paint shop may look completely different in your home. There are many factors that affect the color, from how much natural light you have streaming in, to the color temperature of the light bulbs in your room. It is always best to get a hold of a small sample top of your desired paint color and paint a decent sized section of your wall to check out the color. Observe it at many different times of the day and under many different lighting conditions to see how the color changes before you commit to anything. If you can't paint a swatch on your wall, I suggest making or getting color samples painted with real paint as this gives you a better idea than a paint swatch that is printed with ink. Paint boards will also allow you to choose more accurately, especially if you don't have white walls. There are places like Samplies that sell samples in a peel and stick format with two coats of actual paint that you can order online. Some paint brands will also give you samples with real paint in their showroom. This applies to wallpaper and especially tiles. Many people didn't know this, but many wallpaper and tiles are produced in batches, often called a dye lot. And those that come from a different lot can have a difference in color, shades, or texture, despite it being the same exact item. This variation can often be bigger on handmade products. The mistake I often see is people often order just barely enough supply with the thought they can order more later down the line. The problem is you might end up with a slightly mismatched product, which when placed side by side can be a really huge eyesore. The solution is to order 10 to 20% more supply than you actually need to complete the job. That way, the dialogues will definitely match and you'll have extra should a mistake be made during installation. Having an extra tile or wallpaper roll also means you'll have the ability to replace broken ones in the future should you have to. You may think that you're getting a good deal when you see a matching furniture set for $3,000 advertised as 70% off with free shipping. But remember, there's nothing free in the furniture industry. You're probably overpaying in other ways that you may not realize, such as lower quality pieces or prices that are jacked up to the moon. Matching sets are one of the biggest no's when furnishing your home. I talked about this in depth in my 9 biggest design mistakes video. They instantly make your space look flat and boring. They will also look dated in a few years. It is fine if you don't really care about what your space looks like, but if you're watching this video, chances are that you want your space to look nice. I find that the best approach is to settle on one major piece and then look to different manufacturers for items that coordinate without perfectly matching. A great way to do this is to shop at boutiques and smaller brands as they tend to have more unique styles, compared to big box stores that usually produce the trendiest and most palatable designs in order to appeal to the masses. This will result in a much more elevated and personal interior, instead of a basic catalog look. If you're unsure where to shop, be sure to check out our mega shopping list database, where we cover over 300 stores, from big box to independent makers, so you can always find what you need for your home. I totally understand if you're on a tight budget. In fact, mixing new and vintage pieces is one of the tricks many designers use to bring in warmth and character to a space. You can get high quality and interesting pieces by shopping secondhand through marketplace, flea markets, or thrift shops. You can even score free pieces from curbsides every now and then if you live in a big city. As a bonus, I've also curated 27 free museum quality vintage artworks and a guide on where you can get more of these, which you can download for free via the link below or in the description box. If you want to know more about how to decorate on a budget, I'll suggest watching my video on how to have a well-decorated space on a $0 budget. It's linked in the description box below. Don't get attached to a furniture until you're certain it will fit in your room. Time and time again, I see people buy furniture, or worse, a custom-made piece, only to realize that it won't fit in their space. It is horrible having to deal with that type of regret every day. This often happens when you buy something online or from a huge showroom as it is hard to judge the scale. The solution is simple. Measure your space and measure every piece of furniture you're considering before buying. Especially focus on measuring the areas available for major pieces like your bed, sofa, and dining table to figure out an acceptable size range. If you're unsure, use painter tapes on your floor so you can simulate walking around these pieces. 
Record all of your measurements on your phone's notes app so you don't have to guess when you're shopping. If anything falls out of your measurement range, it shouldn't even be considered. It doesn't matter how much you like the design or color. I covered all of this in my biggest design mistake not having a plan video. So if you want more tips on how to come up with an effective plan, I'd highly suggest checking that video out. Before I continue, I'd like to thank Kittle for sponsoring today's video. Kittle is one of the most intuitive design platforms I've come across, where you can create stunning designs of almost anything in a matter of minutes. Posters, logos, packagings, t-shirts, stickers, greeting cards. The possibility is endless with Kittle's advanced editor and massive library of fonts, illustrations, templates, and many more. They're also very easy and intuitive to use, so anyone without a design background can get started right away. One of my favorite things is their range of AI features, which can speed up your workflow by generating scalable vector logos on the fly, generating backgrounds for your photo shoots, and in general, take your design to the next level. You can even sell the designs you make in Kittle. So if you're looking to start a business or side hustle, this can be a great way to start. Their print-on-demand feature allows you to translate your designs directly into a range of physical products delivered straight to your door. Perfect for making merchandises, personalized gifts, or to make something special for yourself. If you're looking for an all-in-one design software or looking to start a print-on-demand business, then use the code on screen or link in the description to try out Kittle for free. Inspecting your orders upon arrival is a crucial step for your to-do list. It is not enough to only take off that your products have arrived. You need to inspect them straight away so if there's anything wrong with them, you can send them back within the return period. This step is especially crucial for large furniture pieces as they're really hard to return on your own. And also natural materials like tiles as there can be discrepancies in colors and details. You also don't want to leave it up to your tradesmen to open up your orders only to find out that they're broken or the wrong size. You'll still have to pay their hourly rate and waste money on getting them back in once the product has been opened. Or worse, once it has passed the return period. There's nothing worse than walking into a room with a gorgeous sofa and nothing else, simply because the owners didn't budget properly. Having a budget is so important as it allows you to plan out your purchases and prioritize on what to spend more on and how much you can spend on each piece. In a dream world, we'll just buy everything we had our eyes on and not think about money. Unfortunately, that is not the reality for most of us. There's no point buying a $6,000 sofa if your whole budget is $7,000. A single expensive piece will magically save your home. It also doesn't matter if your budget is $1,000 or $100,000, as you can still have a beautiful space with both. Of course, on a smaller budget, you'll need to sacrifice more time going to flea markets and up shops to find a good deal. But having an idea on budget allows us to plan better and not have regrets later on. I always recommend to my clients to not make their lives harder by starting with a paint color first and building their space around it. Picking a paint color once you've settled on an overarching color scheme for your space is hard enough as it is. It is always best to have as much of a plan or direction for your space first. Have a rough idea about the major soft finishings or hard finishes that you want. It is much harder to find a fabric color for a sofa, rug, or curtains, or the right tiles and countertops that relates to your chosen paint color in contrast to doing it the other way around, as there are millions of paint colors with different shades and undertones to choose from. This is not a hard and fast rule. If you're starting from scratch and have a decent understanding of your personal style and neutral undertones, then by all means choose your paint color first as it will help inform the mood of your space. You can also choose paint color first if you just moved in and can't stand the previous owner's wall color. Even then, I'll suggest having as much of a plan as possible before settling on paint, as it is much easier to relate the paint to existing fabrics and finishes in the room. If you're making a decision about big ticket items like flooring, tiles, wallpaper, or an expensive sofa, make sure you get a sample or swatch and check it out under the light conditions of your home, just like what you would do for a paint sample. Everything looks completely different at home compared to the showroom or on a computer screen. If you don't have time to visit the showroom in person, see if you can order your samples online as most stores will send them by mail. Having these samples will also allow you to make better decisions about your purchase. You can save a lot of money doing a project on your own, but there are also times when it will cost you more, not just in terms of money, but also time and frustration. Before you plan on starting a project, 
Consider the scope of the task from start to finish. Estimate what it will take to complete the project and be honest with yourself on whether it is realistic with your schedule or abilities. Also consider if the cost savings are worth the time and effort. If you're new to DIY, it may be wise to start with something small before going all in on something big. You don't want to be stuck attempting a DIY that you can't complete yourself without the help of a professional. It will end up taking a lot more time and costing you a lot more than expected. This does not mean that you can't modernize your home for the 21st century, but instead of throwing everything out, consider how you can retain some of your home's original charm. Getting rid of something old and high quality just for the sake of new is hard on the planet. It is even worse if you replace old high quality elements with builder grade finishes. Not to mention, many of these original elements are very costly to replace. There are many ways you can preserve and showcase a home's rich history and architectural beauty while modernizing the space to suit your needs better. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the 9 biggest design mistakes and 11 things to avoid if you want a low maintenance home. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for weekly design tips if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.